Hello everybody, welcome, good afternoon. It's that time again when we get right together and um, look at some interesting stuff and get in and out of the sunshine because it's been a very sunny day today. It's all really, really good. So I can see there's a fair number of you out there who are all waiting to uh, join in and we'll do our little best to answer your questions and uh, show you some stuff and all that kind of thing. So, yes, absolutely. Now, ha have you been to the, have you seen our new website recently? We launched, we did it yesterday. Look, we've got new branding. We've got, look, even the cat, the whole thing. Oh my goodness, it's so exciting. I can't tell you. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's taken a lot of work. But anyway, hopefully, go and check it out if you haven't um, checked it out um, already. And you can then, uh, you know, let us know what you think. But I think actually the whole thing is a little bit more uh, useful from the point of view. There's more information there and all the rest of it. Right. Oh, yes. Good. Hello, Sargas Music. Hello, Steve Winford Brown. Greetings from Vienna. Thomas Fitzgerald. Hello. You're all out there. Um, yeah, okay. Elephant in the Room, Spitfire, um, BBC Spitfire Orchestra. Well, that's exciting, isn't it? Who saw that coming? Um, so not only do they have the uh, top of the line one now, the uh, whatever it is, £800 one, um, there's now uh, Discovery, which is something insane, like, what, €49 Euros or something, and, um, and Core, which is about £300. Um, I've downloaded both of them because all those who own the... Um, full pro version, uh, get the uh, um, under ones as well. Um, now, next week's going to be an exciting week because uh, on Tuesday, I think it is, um, we're talking to um, Jake Jackson, who is uh, the chief engineer at Spitfire, and he's an amazing mixing engineer. So we'll be talking to him about mixing, and obviously we'll be asking him all about Spitfire and all the new stuff and where it all sits and any technical questions you have about that then he'll be here so i think that's going to be live on tuesday um yes of course i'm going to be jumping in and doing a piece with uh the new um i think i'll do i may well do two i think i'll probably start with discovery i just looked at it today and it's pretty impressive what you get for 50 quid you know, uh, really, really impressive. Um, hello, Italy. Hello. Bonjour from France. Hello, Tim. Uh, hello, Tony. Stuck in Milan. Are you, do you live in Milan or are you stuck in Milan? And Randall from Missouri. There's lots of you out there. Very, very good. Excellent. Really pleased to see you all here today. Um, so, yeah. So then, so next week, we're going to be talking to Jake. We'll definitely be doing a piece on um, uh, the new libraries and we've got other stuff coming up as well so it should be quite an action-packed week so I look forward to all of that now um, today's topic as you may well remember um, is um, the we're looking at sound design and synths today and what I thought we'd do is we would have a little canter through a couple of the synths which I use most frequently um, and um, we can talk about answer your questions and we can try and do a little bit of sound design and pull stuff around um, there's a couple of plugins and things which I'd really like you to introduce you to. Um, hi, Judd. Hi, Frank. Hi, Mark. Hi, Marcel. Hi, Robert. Um, so one of the ones, have you come across Stutter Edit from Isotope? Um, Isotope stuff is really cool. As you know, I'm a big fan of Iris too. Any of you who've seen my um, stuff um, I've done with uh, you know, um, some of the writing stuff where we've been um, you know, doing uh, some... Uh, uh, sampling as we go I often use isotope because it's iris because it's so quick and so easy to do well they also produce this sample uh, this uh, plugin called stutter edit have you got stutter it okay there's a the, what I discovered today was there is this extraordinary deal on um, whereby it used to be like 800 and this whole bundle used to be about 800 quid or something and it's now what was it 40 or or 80 or so I mean it's really really cheap so um you know and I'm I don't get anything from this, but I'm just telling you this is, I think this is really cool. So look, wh the way this, it, what it really does, it, um, it messes with time and it gives sutter effects and delay effects and um, pitch shifting effects, all kinds of things. But it works in a very, very unusual way in that you put the plug in on the audio track and then you actually trigger the effects from a MIDI track. So if we look at, here we go. Doodle up. Uh, the uh, that track there, 
uh, and get the mix console open and get the old thing going. There we go. There's the isotope and it comes up. So you put the you put the stu you put the, um, the the effect there. Then you have a MIDI track which you connect to that. And then when you're playing it, you just play from the keyboard and it does amazing things. Here, look, I've got a little loop which I've got going here. It's really, really, really easy. And it does all that kind of stuff straight out the box. You get uh, a whole load of banks. So, so you've, you've got tons and tons of different effects built into this. And you can make your own custom effects so that you um, time warp. Okay. Yeah, you can. Okay, let's try this one. See what this does. Okay. But I use what, the, when it works best is across, uh, you can use it across a whole stereo track or something like. Where's that one? Got? You don't want to overdo it, but the thing is, if you record into the MIDI track, you can have whichever one you like, and then you can go into the um, the MIDI and edit it. It's fantastic. I've used it. I used it a lot in. Uh, a series did called Robozuna, which was for Netflix and ITV. And they had these big battles between these robots. And it wanted to be quite cool. And so we had quite a lot of stuff. And we used this a lot. And particularly when a robot suddenly gets hit. And they had this effect where it all went in slow motion and went like that. And we were just putting the whole stereo mix or the stem through this. And then messing about until we got something we liked. And it just sounds like something... You could do it using... Um, you know, filters and pitch shifting and all kinds of editing. But, but to be honest, you know, uh, wh why, tr why try harder? I mean, as I say, it's, uh, it is super cheap at the moment. Um, let me just look at it for you because I, you know, I'm, I've come relatively recently to um, uh, uh, the uh, stutter edit. Here we go. Look, $49. Uh, but I've already had all their other stuff. I've already got uh, quite a lot of other things. I've got, I use Iris, I use Trash, which uh, I use Break Tweaker uh, for $49, down from $895. <laughs> okay, uh, that's, you know, if you want easy, it is off. Of course it's cheating. What's wrong with that? If you're on a deadline, you know, if you're trying to get stuff done, look, I mean... <laughs> Do you think the guy who invented the car and all those horse people said, that's cheating, <laughs> you've got to get the horse out, you've got to... It's easier, it's just easier. It doesn't cheating, it just sounds great. It just sounds great. And, you know, of course you can do it the, uh, you know, the, the hard way. And sometimes, you know, there's lots of things you can do like that, which... Yeah, I know it, it, and sometimes it sounds better, and sometimes because you've got more control. But frankly, in its it, for its particular sound, I think this is a bit of a no-brainer. But there we go. Look, it's entirely up to you if you, if you want to, if you've got the time and the energy to spend um, doing all that by hand. You know, because you could, and particularly those of you who work in um, FL and Ableton, it's uh, there's ways of doing it in those um, platforms which make life a bit easier. But but look. I mean, there we go. I know, for, I, 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 I literally, I was just looking it up today and said, I wonder how much it is. Um, and I thought, oh, okay, it's 119. Hang on, what's this bundle? $49, that's crazy. This, I put on the sunglasses of doubt because I was not sure that what I could see was, uh, I could believe. I then pulled on the hat of good value and we got sunglasses of doubt and hat of good value. What? This is off to a flying start. <laughs> right. Okay. I want to take you through. Now, ha you're all akin to... Now, let's... Uh, yeah, trailer music. Uh, uh, exactly. Hi, Emily. Nice to see you again. 
Uh, who else have we got in the room? Thomas, we got uh, Scambot Terminator. Uh, all kinds of people. Guy making trap house. That well, no, you know, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not confined by any one genre. But I don't spend my life doing that. No, you know, beat slicing does take a lot of time. Yeah, uh, in kind from the horse. <laughs> Look, I'm not John William. I am not going to get drawn into a semantic argument about whether a horse is a fundamentally different thing from a car, which obviously it is. Um, we could be here all day, and I would watch my subscribers dwindle away. Have you noticed how close to 100,000 subscribers we are? It is. We're trying not to get excited, but we are. <laughs> That's, it's just insane. Oh, my Lord. He's down in Selsey. We've got people who are just around the corner. Selsey, midnight in Hong Kong, that, and in Ukraine, and Colorado. So I've got everybody from people who are literally five minutes down the road at Bun Leisure Park in Selsey to people who are the other side of the world. What fun, eh? And here we all are, talking about the stuff we're interested in, which is all this kind of malarkey, isn't it, eh? All this caper. Right, um, this is one of the ones I've come across re relatively recently, and I, I really, really, really like it. It's, <coughs> um, it's probably the one I go to more often than most. Um, it's called Dune. Um, uh, I suspect a number of you probably are already familiar with it. Hang on, let me just get my little thing over here. There we go, so I can have a look at it. Um, it's uh, by Synapse Audio. I'm just looking at how much it is, that's all. Uh, £139 and there's a demo version. Um, it is insane. You can load up as many, pretty much as many oscillators as you want. You can have a sound which has got like 500 oscillators or something. Absolutely insane. So what it specialises in are these big kind of warm, amazing, swooshy, blushy, buffy, bucky type sounds. This is the one they load up with. It, oh, it's interesting what they choose to put as sound one. So this is a, okay, so it's got, it's got two arpeggiators built into it, it's got loads of effects built into it and all the rest of it. But the stuff I like most is uh, Dune Factory. You get quite a lot of sounds when it comes to, some of these pads, they're just so rich. They've got so many different ways of messing with the detune and so many different ways of stacking things up. So you can just, it can, you know, if you stack everything up so you've got 500 oscillators running, you're going to watch your CPU go, oh, please be kind to me, be kind to me. Uh, and it will fall over if you're not careful. But nonetheless, it doesn't matter because you only, with all the synth stuff, you can bounce it out. And you don't leave it on all day long. Um, that would be silly, wouldn't it? Uh, uh, please hand him a tight pace. Um, well, the thing with a lot of this stuff is you don't you don't just use one patch a lot of the time, or it does sound a little bit presetty. Um, you go to you try and layer stuff up. So, but I personally, I really think that uh, look, I'll show. Okay, I'll tell you what. Probably an interesting thing to do is if we initialize it, the thing to you've got virtual analog, which are these all all these standard uh, waveform type things, uh, pulse width. Yeah, so what behaves like a, you then got wavetable synths, and you got you know zillions of those. Uh, you can have as many as you like, really. Uh, look, oh my goodness, cicada sounds, all kinds of stuff, uh, and it's FM, so it's all in one. I tend to, I tend. If I'm just loading up, a, if I'm starting from scratch like this, I'll start with that kind of thing. Look, this, how easy is this? And I've just, you know, I've been at this, what? Less than 30 seconds. Uh, nice, easy. Pull that. You know, that's almost something which is usable already. And if you wanted, it's uh, the arpeggiators and things like that are quite cool. Huh? Maybe we should talk about. I tell you, what, I'll talk, talk about that. Well, maybe we're we'll talking about it now. Um, there's no, if you wanted that, um, uh, those sort of pulsy bass things. You know, somebody was talking about Highlander um, about uh, the Hans Zimmer thing. There's several ways of achieving that effect. Um, one of them is using an arpeggiator, where you just do that. Uh, 
that works. You do sometimes, um, I, I don't tend to use arpeggiators very much. Um, a slightly more uh, esoteric way of doing it is using multi-stage envelope generators, MSCGs, these things. Uh, and we'll go for sixteenths. Where's sixteenths? There's a sixteenth thing in here somewhere. Uh, okay, sixteenth A, that'll do. Now, what you do is you assign that. Uh, how this works in different um, uh, synths is very different. Uh, but basically, you have modulators, which can be a low-frequency oscillator, or it can be a MSEG, and you assign it. So we say MSEG1, where's MSEG1? And we assign it to, say, filter, because that's the easiest way of getting it to do its thing. And then, then you just turn it up, or down. And the difference with this way is you can you can you've got a lot more control over the shape of each note of each of the notes you know uh, so the thing is what i've found with dune is it is very easy to get your own sound up and running because most of the the vast majority of synths i start with a preset and mess with it uh which is you know which is fine uh it is the sort of strangest thing sort of uh, aesthetic and it's really come back um can you split or use multis with Dune as sections? I don't know. I wouldn't, um, personally, because why would you do that when you can have either two of them or you have one sound which you bounce and then you have a second sound which you bounce and then you've got so much more control, uh, unless you're doing it live. But, but then why would you be using... This isn't really destined for live, is it? Oh, well, maybe it is. I don't know. I mean, um, the other way, the third way of... Um, doing that sort of um, bouncy bass thing. Okay, let's get a nice... Okay. If you get one up like this, get a sustain sound you like, and then use a trance gate or one of them. There's a number of different ones around. My particular favourite is a Killer Hearts uh, trance gate, uh, which is that one. And what it does is this. See, very simple. I quite like that. Um, and you can make different patterns out of it. So that's another way of doing it. And I, I do that quite a lot. I use that. Um, that's, you could, the nice thing with things like killer, hurts, killer Hearts and those kind of things is you can put... Uh, guitars and all that kind of malarkey through them and they sound really fantastic um, so if I wanted a it, the thing is there's no right you know when we're talking about what you know what synth we're going to go for and what, what what do we like and all the rest of it it's not as though there's any one right answer because they're all good uh, all these ones I'm talking about you know I only ever talk about stuff I think is good there's I don't you know go to go out of my way to 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 go and you know, draw your attention to stuff and then slag it off because there's not much point, is there? You know, so can you move your cam away from the bottom of the corner so we can see? It? Yeah, okay, sorry. I know, I know. I'm sorry. I will, I will make sure that I. Yes, I will. Let's move myself down there. I can move myself around. Maybe I'll put myself up there for a moment. See if that works. There. Look. <laughs> Except there's not much to see at the moment. Um. So these are. I mean, that is basically more. I think the approach with Dune is more of an analog synth than anything else. This is a very different type of wavetable synth called Serum. Any of you out there got Serum? Uh, okay, let's have a little look at Serum. Because Serum has a very sort of, it's a very different approach. Uh, here we go. Let's go for a, let's go for a lead. Let's try. It's, it makes a very, you see, these aren't really in competition with each other because they're just making radically different type of sound. You know, this is um, much more wavetable. Uh, it does very, it's got some really, really clean oscillators. It sounds absolutely, uh, you know, really sharp and interesting. And makes some really aggressive sounds too. <laughs> don't go, just don't go there. 
so they're not it's not oh am i just going to have one synth if you're going to get into this kind of thing you probably need more than one because you could go all day using serum but then it might all sound a bit kind of clean and glassy and all that and maybe you, you're missing that warmth so if you sort of double stuff up uh, so you get It's a very, very interesting sound there. I really, really like it. I know lots of uh, more electronically minded musicians use this a lot. And there's, I mean, again, you've got loads of envelopes, you've got loads of LFOs, um, you've got all kinds of control. Uh, but the real thing is this wavetable thing, the, the kind of, um, the waveforms you can get to mess with. Because look, look at all this stuff. <laughs> And another thing you can do, and Serum's quite good for this, uh, when you start stacking up plugins, you never know when the whole thing's not going to fall over. Um, so uh, is if you start putting this stuff through guitar pedals, uh, it sounds really, really great. Uh, so and I'm sure you've all got your own favorite. What are we going to? Oh, OK, guitar rig comes with complete. It's pretty cool. Uh, it sounds quite processed. Uh, it doesn't sound, you know, it's, uh, and if you get the right, that is quite a nice sound. I quite like that. You know, I, and you can then mess with that and then you can put it through stutter edit and make it do its funky thing you know, whatever. Um, so you can see the way that this can start to build up um, and you can make stuff cool and interesting and different. Let me get it so uh, it's not snapping to the bar, is it? Come on, come on, snap to the bar. I shouldn't have put the stutter on it on, should I? Anyway, you, look, I, I could go on doing this all day long. But, I mean, the uh, serum is really brings something interesting, new and interesting and different. And um, there, are, there are lots of... It isn't all sort of super hard, aggressive stuff like that. Um, hang on, let me, let me just take off the guitar rig thing for a minute before... Uh, but actually, using guitar pedals with... Um, uh, synth sounds, you can get something very close to a, um, uh, a you know, a, a rock lead and things like that if you're not that kind of person you want. It. Anyway, it, it, it can sound really cool. Right, let's have a look at a couple of questions. Uh, uh, <laughs> Mr. Drummer 316, who are you? Uh, uh, okay, is that Martin Grattan? Is Mr. Drummer 316 Martin Grattan? I think it might well be Martin. Yeah. Uh, hello, Emily and Helen. Not seen you since yesterday. Okay, that sounds prom. Okay, so there's a sub conversation. Is Massive used commonly in film or game scoring? Um, lots of people use Massive. Um, I use Massive sometimes. I, it's not one of my go-to's for some reason. I mean, you just, I tend, I tend to sort of drift from one to another. So I like Serum at the moment. I like. I'm very fond of uh, Razor. Let's just before we move on from Serum, uh, look at some of the pads because this isn't all this big aggressive stuff but it does have a very different sound. That does not sound like an analog synth doing the same thing. You know, there's lots in here, which is, it, there's lots in here to like. Uh, you know, if you just bounce that out and use that, for example, Okay, let's turn that off, um, and then you just bounce it to audio, and then mess with it. Uh, you can turn it into a, uh, a a little sort of sound bite, which you drop into places. So let's turn the grid snapping off. Let's turn that down like that. Let's chop that at the beginning. Put the grid back on. Right, so there we go. Now we're going to maybe what could we do with it? 
We can stretch it. Um, am I? Is it right behind me? No, no, it's not completely behind me. That's all right. I tell you what, let me get. You don't need to see me. You know what I look like. There we go. Um, right, let's drag this right out so it's much longer. You get those cool artifacts in there, um, which I quite like. And now we can put. Uh, now let's. I tell you, now now is a good time to pay, maybe to put the transgate thing on. Uh, and then you use that as a little, you just create these little elements which you can then keep as audio. Okay, then we can perhaps uh, do uh, some pitch shifting, um, which is, I use the envelope pitch shifter a lot in uh, Cubase. So you go, so there we go, so we can just draw a pitch envelope and it will pitch it down like that. Uh, time correction? No. Uh, transpose range 16. Okay, let's see what that sounds like. Anyway, that's quite cool. <laughs> now that's how, uh, you know, that's how I spend half of my life. It's just messing. And the thing is, you just try stuff and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't and you know if you like it you keep it and you stick it on the shelf for a rainy day you know so <sighs> i've got some weird usb thing going on today uh, oh, you love virus. Yes, a lot of people are very, very fond of virus. Virus is good. It's been around for a long time. Uh, to, um, ah, Vexy, I have a spreadsheet of all the VSTs I have to make sure I don't rebuy them again. again. Yeah, I know. I was just talking to somebody about this yesterday. Uh, it's kind of... I've bought things more than once. Oh, for goodness sake, machine, what's going on? Something, so, there's somewhere there is an, uh, a USB thing which is not working properly and it's doing this weird in and outy thing and uh, I can't work out where it is, which is, can you hear it? Are you hearing that? Oh, well, anyway, never mind. Right, let's move on. Um, let's get rid of that for the moment. Um, any questions out there? Let's see, is it limits to my sound pad? Oh, for goodness sake, hang on, I've got to work out how to turn this sound off. It's driving me bonkers. Uh, uh is that going to kill the sound? Let me just, if I, no. That's all right, good. That's fine, we're still there. <sighs> yeah, USB wants to play. I've, I, there's a problem with this machine at the moment. I'm getting some blue screen of death in the morning, I, but I just haven't had time to sort it out. It's a, I think it's a driver problem. This is something you do tend to get on Windows machines. You don't get so much on Macs, but boy, do you pay for it on a Mac. It's not as though they're infallible by any stretch of the imagination. I've had, I've had all kinds of problems on Macs as well. And, and, you know, and to be fair, you know, when you're trying to run, if I'm trying to run everything on one machine, what kind of nutcase does that? I mean, you know, I've got Cubase running with all these synths in it. I then will have VSL Ensemble Pro with all the instruments in it. And then... We have this live streaming software called Wirecast, which is complicated and uses insane amounts of CPU. Um, but it is quite cool because it does mean I can just sort of drop in little subscription buttons and things like that and all that and go to the live thing and come out again and all. You know, it's very, it's very, fu it, you know, it's, it's really good at what it does, but I am asking for trouble, aren't I? You know, uh, yeah, uh, I need to, yeah. I need to sample it, do, 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 except it probably belongs to, who owns that? Well, obviously, we all know who owns that. It's uh, Microsoft owns that. Right, look, moving, moving on, moving on. Um, Razer, uh, it's a reactor instrument. And it's, uh, again, it's, it's very sort of, it's additive synthesis. And so interesting again, what do they pick up as 001? Thing, something called Big Cinema. It's that THX sound, isn't it? by pigeon 
Oh, <laughs> I wish. No, we the streaming missive we've now. Uh, uh, last time it was the microphone. Today it's the USB. Next up, guy will watch himself munch him. <laughs> guy glitches out, uh, 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 etc. Uh, look, you know, it's quite hard work transmitting all this stuff from a little shed in the middle of West Sussex. But it's sort of it's, every time we do it, it gets one step closer to, you know, perf is the care rolling on the cable? Oh, you're prob. It's. It, more often than not, it's something simple like that. But no, I mean, most of these things, as you well know, I have the sheet. Well, look, look, I don't know if you can see on, you know, piano behind, pencil, paper, score music, you know, yeah. It's all there. It's all there. Right. Um, meanwhile, back with the wacky world of Razor, um, this reactor is a, a very, very powerful kind of modular sort of synthesis system, which comes from native instruments. And um, reactor is a is a is is a instrument which plays inside it. Uh, but it does have a very, very interesting. Really nice, you know, because again, if you if you layer this stuff. You get all kinds of value out of it. Um, uh, what else do you can play? Vocoder, sound shapes and sequences. That's good. I like that. That's a nice effect, isn't it? Does Larry have a wireless keeper? Larry has legged it. I hear, I can hear him around, but does he t does he come and see me? Does he remember me? Does he send me a text? Does he call me? Does he FaceTime me? Look, I've heard of social distancing, but a pheasant, a pheasant social distancing for goodness sake, Larry. You know you've got you've got people who care about you here, man. Come on, turn to. Oh, what is? Yeah, I, w I wish I knew. I've heard him. Oh, oh, oh. He does. He's over there somewhere. You know. But, oh. Dear old Larry. He'll turn up. I thought I saw him. Yeah, this live will be available later. Absolutely. We As soon as we stop doing it, um, it then becomes... Da -dum! It pops up on YouTube and you can watch the whole thing from the beginning. Okay, look. Um, so... Uh, Razor is another one. You can see how all oh, Razor sounds interesting. Um, it's it is additive synth, so it's more it's hot. It is quite hard to work out how to start from scratch with Razor, but it is quite easy to mess with things. They have this thing called waterbed, and there's all all kinds of stuff. You can, the only problem with having all the different synths is, although they s fundamentally w work in a similar way. And some controls, like filters, envelopes, and things like that, are the same. A lot of the other stuff is custom, and it's completely different. So how do you apply, for example, um, modulation from an LFO to um, a uh, filter cover? It's different in every single one. And it kind of, oh, really? Have I got to learn this again? <laughs> I mean, I think, how does this one work? This one, is, a lot of them you can drag and drop and things like, anyway, look, I'm not going to get into all that. But, um, so I definitely, uh, somebody was asking before this started, uh, you know, how do I feel on the great debate between diving into one synth and knowing it perfectly and just glossing over the, the top? What do you think? What do you think I am? Yes, I'm Mr. Glossing Over the Top. No, I've got a fairly good understanding of how synthesis works, particularly sub subtractive synthesis, uh, and I can start from scratch easily and make it all work, but do I spend, you know, put aside a couple... Of... When I do put aside time to learn a synthesizer, the trouble is I then do it for a bit, and then I forget all about it and come back and go, I've no idea what I'm doing again. Once again, I start from scratch. Now, no conversation about uh, synthesis is complete, without uh, the Yuhei stuff. I mean, it's... Yuhei produce... I don't, know, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing the poor guy's name right. Um, they produce all kinds of stuff, and they've done uh, a very nice pair of instruments called Repro 1 and Repro 5. Now, these are um, virtual 
uh, inspired by uh, a company called Sequential Circuits produced the most uh, iconic synths of the, when was it, 80s? Um, and one was called a Prophet 5. And a Prophet 5 is the sound of Stranger Things. And uh, it's, it, except those boys, I think, use a real one. Uh, you know, and it definitely does sound, there is a sort of warmth and a size and a scale to the real one. But they cost insane amounts of money and they go out of tune. And, you know, it's like, you know, anyway. Uh, but these, this is absolutely great. And they do two. So this is a monophonic synthesizer. It's based on uh, the uh, a pro one. I owned a real one and somewhere in the mists of time, it disappeared. It's probably worth a double, double, double die fortune. Glitch Machine. I was talking to the, the guy who runs Glitch Machine and we're going to be having a look at some of his stuff in the not too distant future. I love his stuff as well. I think it's absolutely great. Because this is the sort of stuff, you know, these kind of plugins, like Stutter Edit, like all the stuff from um, Glitch Machine, you know, which makes your music more interesting. If you're just going to use just straight out the box sounds, uh, you know. Well, I'll tell you why also. I mean, I'm not surprised Vince Clark really liked it. It's it's got this power to it, and you really do get this. I can't even remember how that goes. But doesn't that have that sort of... I like that. I think you can convince yourself um, when it comes to hardware synths. I know uh, a lot of people get very, very excited about buying hardware synths. And it is a little bit like collecting classic cars. Um, and you can convince yourself it sounds absolutely amazing and better. Um, but in a practical, everyday sense, you know, being able to go and bounce that and have multiple versions of this and all that. Frankly, I find that more useful. This. I mean, this is just um, playing with the, uh, with the presets. But you, this is what I would tend to do. If you know what this... Uh, can you see this side? Yeah. If you know what this side does, filters, filter envelope and envelope and amp, that gives you most of the control you need. Uh, how much envelope, how much resonance. Oh, it's quite nice. Now, I'll tell you an interesting effect, which you may well have come across. Let's, let's find a nice basic bass now. I don't quite... Let's whack that up a couple of times. Okay. And now, what tends to happen... Okay, here. I, I wonder if you're going to be able to hear this. As you knock the... F this is the cutoff. This is the cutoff for the low-pass filter. Can you hear it getting flatter as you go down? Uh, that is a thing. Um, it's to do with phase something. Anyway, it doesn't matter what it's to do with. Uh, but it's a thing that as you uh, rack the uh, cutoff down, the pitch goes down as well. So what you sometimes have to do... Uh, all I can hear is Windows USB sound. Can you fix it? I'm... I uh, don't think that can be the thing, can it? Uh, I can hear USB sound. Okay, I, I'm hearing what you hear, I think. Uh, okay. Mm. <sighs> okay, is, this a, is there a problem going on here of which I am unaware? Uh, I thought I turned it off. I'm, a, I'm not hearing it, you see. Uh, if... Oh, USB, USB, USB. Okay, turn it off. Right. 
Okay, let me... Give me a second, team. I didn't realise that was still happening. I'm sorry. Uh, let's just... Uh, talk amongst yourselves for a second. Let me just find uh, where the... Where my device is... Uh, okay. Uh, oh, it stopped. Turn off window system sounds, please, in the control panel. That's what I'm trying to do. Hang on. I'm, uh, system sounds. Here we go. Master volume. HDMI. Okay. Testimony. Okay, that's really weird. Looks like it's off. Oh, no. System here. Here we go. It is definitely gone now. Okay. Right. Is that done? I'm so sorry. I didn't realize it was still happening. That's very strange because I can't hear it. And I'm hearing the output. Okay, don't worry. Look. Okay. The bing bong has stopped. Oh. Uninvited sound bings. Yeah, I know. When you notice the chat. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. I ha I'm going to have to get to grips with which of my many and various USB devices. Okay. <clears throat> I have probably arguably got too many USB things going into this machine. There's actually a lot of... Ah, uh, you know what? Ah! Oh. Do you know what I think it was? Oh, that is so embarrassing. <laughs> that is beyond embarrassing. It can't, it can't be. Here's the keyboard. Here's the laptop. Laptop sitting on the edge of the keyboard. Going, me, 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 me. I think that might have been what it was. That is so... Is there an elf unplugging and unplugging his back his cables? I have possible... USB is... You do run out of USB power and all kinds of things when you have this, which a lot of you ask about, which is the platform M Plus up from Icon, which is the um, all the faders. Um, there's an Akai APC Mini, which I use for um, switch, key switching. A Machine Micro. This is the version 1 Machine Micro. It's currently unplugged because there is a conflict between that and the motherboard, which causes the machine to crash. Would you believe that? Uh, and I'm not going to rush off and buy a Mark II. Then there's the Focusrite. Um, what else have I got? Uh, this keyboard, obviously. Um, plus two cameras. There is an argument which says, Guy, you're possibly running too many things into one machine. Yes, I think that's true. You love fiddling endlessly with your native instruments since. And some, I mean, I do like fiddling, but I'm really, I like fiddling with purpose. Um, you know, to be absolutely honest. I mean, I like working, I don't like fiddling for the sake of it. Um, so anyway, back to our problem. Okay. You can hear it's, 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 it's sharper and it gets flatter. So what the trouble is, if you're moving the filter during the course of a piece, uh, it's going to go sharper and flatter. So what I, I will sometimes put it through autotune uh, and that sorts it out. Uh, uh, how do I deal with noise? Uh, you mean uh, the, uh, the uh, white noise generator and things like that? I don't use it that much. I mean, when I'm, do you recommend the icon controller? Yes, I do. The icon controller is great. It's expensive, but it's great. Um, um, by the way, is giving away BBC and Symphony or Discover for free? They are sort of, yes. Well, look, um, as I say, next week, uh, those of you who weren't around at the beginning, th uh, next week I'm going to be doing something on uh, Discover and on um, uh, Core. And we've got a live interview with um, Thingamabob. Uh, Jake Jackson as well. Plus another video which I've already shot which is a bit of fun which is uh, I'm uh, doing one on deconstructing the main theme from Animal Crossing New Horizons and then using the motif and trying to do horror music with it and superhero music with it which I thought was quite fun. Anyway it worked, it worked strange it worked strangely well uh, uh, Oh, couldn't work through Cotton Eye Joe. Oh, my Lord. Cotton Eye Joe. I don't think you... <sighs> don't think you can live with that all afternoon. There's <laughs> fun for about 15 seconds. Anyway, look. Okay, so where were we? I'm so off topic. I've been, I've been subjecting you to USBs. 
pounds. And, oh, I'm sorry. I think I need the self-reflecting sunglasses of doubt go on today. Uh, uh, okay, but out there, I pull on the hat of good value because there is so much which is, I mean, you know, plot spoiler, the... BBC Symphony Orchestra Discovery and uh, Discover and Core are blinding value, and uh, you know if you're just starting out, really, just go for it. I mean, honestly, I'll I'll do stuff on it next week, but I mean it's really, 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 really good and great place to start. Uh, at uh, uh, oh, any opinion? Okay, look, I'm I will give you my opinions on that next week. I've given you the sort of highlights anyway okay so the thing about um repro is repro one has a sequencer built in which is a bit of fun um which uh let's see if they've got a sequence no we're not going to ah, hang on, hang on, hang on. the trouble is i keep on forgetting where all the stuff is on this stuff oh come on guy remember where you put the turn on the oh Goodness, that's so frustrating when I forget where things have gone. Where is sequence, 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 sequence? They're all in, was in a different place. Uh, I was only doing this yesterday. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and I thought, yeah, that's cool. We'll do something with that. And I've completely forgotten how I did it. Uh, sequence. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Clock. Uh, play. There we go. Oh, that's it. Here we go. Okay, then play it black. Sound familiar? <laughs> oh, how do you love? I feel love. I feel love. I feel love. I feel love. Etc. Yes, thank you. I found it eventually. Anyway. Yeah. So one of the things about Repro One is it does have this uh, uh, really powerful sequencer inside. Look, look at all this. Look at all this stuff. You know, you get. Uh, anyway, uh, I could go on about that, but I won't because we're going to move on because I want to show you Repro Five. This is the Profit Five. God, I wanted a Profit Five when I was nineteen, playing in a little band. Oh. Boy, I would have killed for a profit five. Um, you know, but uh, nowadays I can just get it inside my synth. It's a bit sad in a way. It's not the same. It really isn't the same. But it does have that wonderful. Uh, yeah, you're right, Kate. It's it's got that seventies. Um, if you want to see how this stuff should be done properly. Uh, uh, Junkie XL's uh, Deadpool score the, from Deadpool One, I think, is one of, is an absolute work of genius. Um, you know, I've spent a lot of my working life doing superhero stuff, and it's a really hard uh, cliche to get out of because everybody knows what a superhero should sound like, and that's why a superhero sounds like a superhero. So, how do you make a superhero different? And, and of course, he's a slightly alternative superhero, being Deadpool, and so. Tom did something really cool. And yeah, John Carpenter, absolutely. Go go with him every day. Uh, so this pair of things you get from, because uh, they come as a pair, Repro 1 and Repro 5, are super duper value. Excellent, wonderful, terrific, great. Uh, uh, the other one from Yuhei, uh, which I use, is, okay, Zebra 2. There's a, there's a, this is a cool version of it, though. There is a thing called Dark Zebra. Dark Zebra is uh, the Hans Zimmer version. And what they have is all the presets from um, the original, uh, fr from uh, Dark Knight and things like that. And it's just hilarious. Uh, so Batcave Hi-Hat Fast. Uh, is it coming? Why is that not coming out? Okay, hang on. Bat Flaps. And when you go through them, you just recognise them from the film. You go, whoa, how cool is that? I think Deadpool is a superhero, yeah. He's not, well, is Batman a superhero? I think he's a bit, I mean, I think it's a superhero movie. Isn't that great? Anyway, look, you can play with these. There's so much. 
Isn't that from the beginning or when they're the bank heist? What I really liked about the Hotspur of, of doing all these sounds and then just going, here, you, you, you lot can have them, is it's Hans Zimmer saying, OK, I'm done with that sound. I'm moving on. And just great. Just great. But Zebra is a very, very powerful synth. And again, look, it's quirky from the point of view. You still have oscillators and filters and all the rest of it. How it organizes them. Once again, you go, oh, how does this work? How am I going? It's, but it's got eight um, MSCGs, which is, you know, there's, there's so much power in this machine. If I'm going to learn one, to be honest, I think still to this day, Zebra stands up right up along with the rest of them as the one to learn. Okay, um, question about CPU and things like that with all this stuff. Um, yes, it, the synths can chew up your CPU. You know, it is, they can uh, really go for that kind of all you eat buffet. Oh, I'm going to, you know. Um, I'm going to chew up your cores. <laughs> that sounds so rude. Um, and um, But it doesn't matter because you are far better off bouncing stuff out because then you can mess with it. And also another thing, okay, if you take, if we take a something like this uh, and just record a bit in, hang on, let me just put myself out of the picture again. Uh, actually get rid of me completely. Who needs me? That's what I say. Okay, here we go. Retrospective recording. Oh, I didn't do it. I, I, do you know, you get so used to stuff like this working. Okay, the point I wanted to make was um, if you quantize it, so it's all banging time, and then you bounce it out, you'll discover it's not always bang on the beat. And so it is better, although you can mess with stuff and pull it about. Okay, let's make it super big. Uh, okay, let's get in there. So remember, this is this is quanta. Let's have a look and see how accurate it's come out. So it's, you see, it's a little bit late. I mean, it's inevitable. It's absolutely inevitable. That is gonna happen. Um, it's nothing wrong. This is much tighter than most, frankly. But if you want it to sound in time, it's going to have to be, you're going to have to pull it forward a bit. It's the nature of the sound because it's going to take, look, and it, does it drift around a bit? It does a little bit, gets a little bit late. So. Well, the loop's miles out, apart from anything else. Absolutely bonkers out. Anyway, take that away for a second. I mean, so if you're... If you want everything to be really tight, uh, evening jazz dude, um, then you, uh, it's English, Why? what's this? <laughs> what's going on here? Late to the party, have you talked about serum? Is, it, is that any good? Oh, Christian. Oh, you missed it. We were giving away 50 free copies of serum. No, we weren't really. We honestly weren't. Uh, uh, does it have a sync in the synth? Absolutely. All the synths will sync to uh, your um, uh, your clock. Uh, that's absolutely vital. Uh, otherwise, you're in big trouble. Um, oh, where's my thing gone? What's going on here? Oh, come on, guy. Get your act together. Oh, it's because it's bounced. That's why. Stupid. Um, so, yeah, all of them... Um, and normally there's a clock control somewhere here, t down here, which will allow you to offset it or to du so you can have multiples of the clock. Um, that is a frequent thing in quite a lot of synths. Um, but frankly, and particularly if you're layering up bouncing synths against um, uh, these uh, uh, big percussion and things like that, you do need to make sure it's all bang in time. Otherwise, you know, it can become very disappointing. Um, have I encouraged you, to, those of you who haven't subscribed, to subscribe yet?
go on, please. We're getting very... I, only, I don't normally... Uh, okay. How many are we up to now? Ugh. It's ten. To, we're up to sort of like ninety-eight thousand or something ridiculous, and we're kind of subscribers, and we're sort of we're crawling towards the famous hundred thousand. And it's <clears throat> anyway. If you haven't uh, subscribed, um, I'd be very grateful if you would. Not least because it's the only way you get to know when I do things like this, and we do do quite a lot of this. And normally, I don't put my laptop on top of the keyboard, so it doesn't go bing, 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 irritatingly like that. Uh, which must be a little bit like somebody saying, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Etc. Uh, what is the time speed velocity of an unladen synth? <laughs> I have no idea. Jazz, jazz Dude says, it's stupid. What is stupid, Jazz Dude? Uh, don't invest money in Spitfire Audio for the first library. No, you can get their first library for free. There's a way, apparently, of getting Discover for free. Uh, look, there's... You know, there's a big argument um, for not going down the orchestral route and for just, you know, making uh, uh, making sounds up yourself and, you know, creating something really interesting and original. You know, start with a teacup sound. You know, but this is why, actually, uh, okay, Jazz, do, I tell you, if you just fast fast rewind to where we came in, I discovered today uh, that, and I'll go back to this isotope deal because I think it's incredible, and it, I don't imagine it's going to be around forever. Uh, uh, where's isotope deals? Here we go. Look at this. Um, if you uh, if you're into look forty nine dollars, you get Iris two, which is one of the easiest ways to create really cool instruments. Uh, stutter edit, brake tweaker, and all the rest of it. It was normally eight hundred ninety five dollars, so it's eight hundred and forty six dollars off. $49. That is uh, insane. Okay. As I say, I have no skin in that game. Uh, I, they're not affiliate, none of this stuff. I just think it's a great deal. And if I was you, and I'm sitting here all furloughed thinking, how am I going to pass my time and save money? I just go and buy that because $49. You can use Iris to create. I Okay. Uh, a little while ago, I was doing um, a... Um, series of workshops at a really cool film festival in uh, Switzerland for a load of undergraduate and postgraduate film students. And I gave them a piece of, uh, what was I working on at the time? Lassie from DreamWorks um, to, uh, to score. And this guy did a really brilliant job. And it was only afterwards he said, every sound you hear in there comes from my voice using Iris. And I went, whoa, whoa, really? Yes, really. Brief interlude with the sunglasses of doubt, but nonetheless, it turns out to be completely true. And so, if he can do that, Iris two and Stutter Edit, and you're in business, mate. Anyway, that's what I'm saying. Uh, but uh, yeah, I know exactly, Neil. I mean, you know, forty nine. It's not going to get any better than that. You know, it's like cowbell. Never enough mugs. <laughs> Actually, in orchestral session, you know, they say no, there's never enough cowboy. Oh, it's sort of ironic. Um, it's piccolo. Because, you know, nobody ever says, can we have the piccolo louder? Because piccolo is like, it's, it's like taking a cordless drill to your forehead, something, if, you, if that resonant frequency is wrong. Uh, Retrolog and pad shop. I, I don't use them very much. They are both great. Um, what I have found with... Um, with uh, synths built into Logic and, and Cubase is they're all really good places to start, but you do need to layer them up more because what you can achieve, you can achieve almost anything you can achieve with th uh, things like, not quite probably, but I mean, with, with things like Dune and Zebra and Repro, but you just need to use lots more layers of it because they are by their nature slightly more simple uh, and less complex. So uh, you absolutely... Uh, uh, you know, you can do really, really good stuff um, with the built-in synths. Um, but you can hear with things like um, Serum and Razor, they just sound really different. And they've got that sort of, you know, that glassy cleanness uh to them, which is really, really cool. And 
you know, and I really like, I know I, I'm a big fan, as you know. So um, I don't go out and um, all these synths I bought, um, none of them are NFR freebies. Um, and I use them all the time. Uh, uh, you know, and, and if you end up with a job where you're going to need quite a quite a lot of this you don't want people to be able to listen to the synth and go oh that sounds like zebra or that sounds like whatever um you want it to be you know interesting and different and a lot of that comes from um uh, layering up and things like that right let me have a look at with carefully not putting the laptop on top of the keyboard again omnisphere is not cheap uh, yeah i used to use omnisphere all the time i just i don't know why i just i had just moved on. I mean, eventually you just get fed up with, no, you don't get fed up. That's not true. Um, you just, you're looking for new sounds all the time, you know, and, you know, so it's, and I'd used it for quite a long time. And I thought, actually, now I'm going to move on. Oh, yeah. Somebody was saying um, Silenth. Um, I used to use Silenth. I can't run it at the moment for some reason. I think it may be, is it still 32 bit? I don't know. Anyway, uh, and Vanguard or whatever it's called. That's you know. So I tend to go through phases, and eventually, if I, I'm always looking for something that sounds different, somebody comes along with a new synth, then I'll you know, which really somebody says, "Oh, have you tried this? Because it's really cool." And I try it, and it is really cool. But there are lots of free ones out there. Yuhei do a one called Tyrrell, which is extremely good. You know. Uh, okay, what's this? Hang on, uh, Shepherd. Can you me? Um, Pigments too. I haven't tried Pigments too. Uh, you can't use Omnisphere for video games. You need another license. You see, that's really not very sensible, is it? Um, yes, I still knock cups of coffee over all the time. So, yeah, I mean, okay, look, I tell you what, let's... Any good for VST? Martin J says, any good for VST vocals? Uh, that's a different question. That's a big question. Okay, are you planning on participating on Spitfire? Or no. <laughs> look, I mean, it's not... It's not cut. Why would why would I do that? I mean, look, it's it's a great competition, and there's going to be thousands of entries, and somebody who's right at the beginning of their career deserves to win it. And if uh, old geezers like me who've been there and done it uh, to some degree start trying to muscle in just to prove we can do what we think we can do, uh, that's not really what that competition's for. And uh, you know, anyway, so. I would uh, strong look. It's a great. Uh, we were talking actually uh, at the very end of postgraduate um, uh, taster week, which we just finished. Um, we were talking about the Westwood uh, Westworld uh, competition because it's really interesting. They've given you a complicated action sequence to score, and that takes quite a lot of doing. And there's a whole load of approaches which you may need to know about in order to do that. But look. Um, <sighs> which you'll have to ask some of those who are some of our postgraduate students about. And they'll tell you. Right, let's do, let's, let's layer some stuff up and sh see if we can't show you what I mean when I'm talking about that. Because, uh, and then make some stuff happen. Okay, so I'm going to stop talking quite so much. Uh, and let's have a look. Uh, it looks like the focus, like, it is a focus right claret. Um, it's fine. Except I've now discovered that just about everybody on Windows uses uh, RME. So I'm having slight sort of... Even Tim, uh, my postgraduate course manager, uses a whatever it's called, babyface. I go, really? Really? <sighs> I should have thought that one through. Right, okay, what have we got? I'll just play any old thing, see what happens. Okay, that'll do. Let's start with that and see where it goes. Uh, right, so I'm just going to, as I said before, we're going to bounce it down. And this is a simple, those of you who weren't here at the beginning, this is literally just a simple little synth um, patch which we made from scratch in about two minutes, uh, which is one of the reasons I quite like um, um, uh, Dune. And then once you've bounced it, you can disable it and you don't have to put up with a headroom. Okay, let's now add one of these more, more edgy synths in like Serum. 
That is a bit too edgy. Um, I like the long sounds because I can play with them. That's too analog. This is the worst thing in the world to do. You do not want to spend your day going grazing through sounds. So let's just make a, some kind of effect out of that. Um, okay, bounce that. Um, render with current player. There it is. Little thing to play with. Once you've got a sound, you can do anything you like with it. Uh, to, um, um, now, what were we? What did we start doing before? We started dragging things out to ridiculous amounts, didn't we? Wow, that that's interesting because you you really don't notice the fact uh, that it's been dragged out that much. Normally, it going maybe because it's quite a simple sound that it actually drags out. Okay, I'm just going to make a little kind of uh, type thing out of this, I think. Uh, and uh, so it's we're not going to use it like that because that would drive me bonkers within two seconds. Uh, but you can uh, let's put okay, let's move that over, move the transgate over, and if I'm going to make the transgate really fast. Uh, that kind of sound. Okay, bounce again. And if you're bouncing each stage, um, you can always go back if you screwed up. Because if you introduce, when you're doing, when you're sort of doing speculative sound design like this, um, if you introduce some distortion or something which later you come to regret. <laughs> I don't know, and it's too late just to pull on the sunglasses of doubt. Uh, you can, uh, okay, and actually what I could do now, now it's done that, I could actually squash it, couldn't I? I could make it go quicker. What would that do? I said, uh, too much. What I was planning on doing is, is, is just simply doing this, so it just goes as a little sort of top thing. That kind of thing. And then putting some... That kind of malarkey. Um, and then we'll put other things in there as well. Sends, a bit of reverb maybe. Uh, I'm wondering about delay. Delay will... Uh, there we go. Okay, that'll do. Now we need something else in there. What's this one? No, that's a bit. It was great back in the day. Oh, it's such a great sound. But it does drag you back about 10 years now. So I think probably. Uh, I'm not sure. Not sure. Uh, to, uh, go for. Maybe they... No. Okay, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to do... Let's... Where were we with Razor? Ah, oh, I liked that, didn't I? Do you remember? Okay. Let's. No. I think I just need it on the first beat of the sequence. Like that. 
and that uh, we can EQ so that it fits. Because if you're layering stuff up, you don't want things competing at the same, fr you know, all the same frequencies, or you're going to be in all kinds of trouble. Uh, so it does, but this is all, anything to do with sound design is always trial and error. You know, it's guided trial and error. Okay, I know what, we'll put that on the offbeat. We're going to put it on beat three, and then we'll have that somewhere else. And this one, this reactor actually could do with some delay on, don't you think? Wouldn't that be some sort of, sort of scoobery type thing? Not Scooby Doo. Okay. It is that one, right? Okay. So, uh, insert delay. Uh, I apologise for having lots of delays. This one is the best. H delay. Are you fond of H delay, boys and girls? Uh, e he 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 says Bruno Prato. <laughs> Uh, uh, let's see how we're doing. Ping pong, um, dotted eighth notes. Now, for some reason, if you do have this, uh, let's just make sure you can still see it and I'm not... Oh, no, guy. Move it out of the way. They cannot see what you're doing. You are an idiot. Okay. This little button here introduces uh, artificial analog sound. And... Yes, B Eat Spider Voice is back. It also introduces noise, and you just don't need it. You really, really don't need it. Uh, so I turn it off. Uh. Okay. Where's that one gone? There we go. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. Um, so uh, I need something else in there, though. It's not that that little dune synth is a bit lonely. And we're definitely not going. We're not. We're not going down that road. We're going to go down. Oh, where was that big? It's too similar to the original one. Um. Uh, let's have a little look here. Is there any... What uh, sensor? Okay. Let's see if... Um, what happens if I... It's always worth trying the mod wheel. Yeah, this is true, Jazz Dude, actually. Going through the factory sounds and reverse engineering them. It is, because you can guarantee that the, the people who did the factory sounds know what they're up to. And if you, look, if you can afford the time to sit down and look at it and go... You know, how have they done that? Uh, let's just put the same thing on the top and see what happens. So. Uh, I'm not convinced by this at all at the moment. At, um, but look. Okay, up 12. Let's put it up an octave. I think it may be too low for that one. Up 14. No. Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm not at all sure, actually. Um, but also, actually, the other thing is it's very, very rare that the only thing I use is synths. Um, that a lot of the time the the power of the synth comes in the fact that you're using other stuff as well. Um, let's just now get the mixer up and then we can balance these two up. Actually, I tell you what, you know I was talking about guitar pedal things. Maybe let's wonder if that repro would benefit from some from being put through a uh, stomp pedal uh, this is the waves version of uh, the stomp pedal. pluck up next you think you think I'd love to hear your reviews of Spitfire audio competition entries my entry has been guided by your tips okay blimey no pressure at uh, right um, 
Driven Wah. Is this gonna am I gonna regret this? Yeah, that doesn't do it at all. Uh what have we got? <sighs> no, I'm not gonna not gonna go there. Um Okay, tell you what, let's get rid of that and let's go b discard. Let's let's drag on Guitar Rig. Guitar Rig does have the power sometimes to bring my entire system crashing down. So I approach Guitar Rig with caution. Um, okay, let's have uh, Styles. Uh, alternative is always a good place to go. What's this going to sound like? That's better. That's a bit loud. That's better. Yeah, Repro does have stomp boxes, you're right. I like that. Okay. Now, what I might do with that is... Uh, it's starting to sound like something. Uh, I wonder if I'm going to put a trance gate on before it goes into that and have it just so it goes... You don't have to use trance gate uh, on full mix. You can have it doing it and... Okay, uh, what happens if I put the H delay over there as well? Would that be really, really asking for trouble? Okay, this is starting, it is just starting to sound like something you could put something on the top of. Do you see what I mean? I mean, uh, my poor speaker, says Richard Cave. I've got in-ear monitors. Uh, this is a, another little development. Okay. Um, what am I going to add to this? Ah, oh, that thing. Now that uh, little grindy thing, uh, where are we going to put it there? Uh, it, that's definitely going to need some something on it. I should really label my track, shouldn't I? Right, that one. Now, I'm going to do two things to that. I'm going to... Uh, I wonder if it's going to be... Is it very, very cheesy to put an auto panner on it? Take the width down a bit. You know, I'm, it's not the best thing, but there's, there's a sort of little thing going on here, which I don't think is the worst thing ever. I'm not sure there's enough reverb on that. You can't, you've got to have more reverb. Hang on, which way do I want to do it? Reverb before the panner? After the panner, obviously, Guy. Actually, I'm going to put, give it its very own reverb. Uh, because maybe, uh, I tell you, uh, maybe what else we could do. There we go, turn that down to 34%. Turn the reverb time up so it's quite high. See what that sounds like. Tycho drum. There, that sounds all right. Okay, that sounds all right. What we might do now um, is rebounce this with all its effects on and uh, then run a second version of it backwards. Uh, do you think that... Is that a bad idea? Uh, hang on, let's duplicate that channel. Run that one backwards, see if it... it could, this could be a terrible idea. 
Okay, uh, now we definitely need to do something with the panning on those two because you can't have them, come, have them coming from the same place. It'd be dr that works. What did I do with my drum loop? Uh, uh, media Bay. Okay, where have I put my drum loop? I had a drum loop and I've forgotten where I've stuck it. Oh, God. Never mind. I don't care. Um, let's try and find a new one. Do you use Splice? I like Splice. Um, it's... Uh, I'm just going to drag that on. I have no idea what it's doing. It's a very easy way of uh, getting kits and things like that if you... And individual drum sounds and you just pay a subscription and uh, you can get and once you've got hundreds and hundreds of uh, loops okay that works okay Suddenly, the sunglasses of doubt are vanished. I like that. Well, I, I mean, I quite like it. It's, it. You know, is it the best thing I've ever written? No, obviously not. It's just a quick little idea on a Friday afternoon. Uh, <laughs> I really like his stuff. I tell you, um, he, he's he, he's quite a wacky producer, Travis Brucker. I mean, he's he's got oh Loop Cloud. I don't know about Loop Cloud. Uh, yeah, I, but you see, if I was actually going to press on with this, I would mess with that loop uh, and do uh, because it's a bit straight and. Uh, God, I can see, I can feel myself being dragged into. You say maybe we would go into our stutter edit mode again. That's about as well mixed as the gin and tonic I'm going to drink in about ten minutes' time. Uh, ho, 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 no, uh, which is not very well mixed is what I'm saying. Uh, but actually, okay, let's get, with the stutter edit stuff, I tend to just, oh, where's the bank? There's a bank which has just got almost everything in it. Uh, scratches and time warp, ooh. Uh, light cycle, oh, just, just pick one, pick one guy, don't mess. Shoom, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, you see? That little something, you know, good old stutter edit. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll give you stutter edit. Um, is really, really, really cool, and uh, it's, you know, um, it, it. Now I I understand those purists out there, and I'm now casting off the sunglasses of doubt and pulling on the cap of good value, because, you know. I know that there are those of you with time on your hands who would actually prefer to go through that drum loop, chop it up, filter it, pitch it, and everything else. Why? Why? You know, I mean... And all that for $49. Bargain, if you ask me. But you see, you do end up... 
you know, people say, well, you know, we couldn't have done this with any one synth. Uh, it's, um, you know, oh, well done, Linda. Uh, uh, hello, Zivi. Uh, well, exactly. This is just the point, that, you know, and um, if each synth has a little role to play and you don't have to think of it as just being one synth track, you know, you, if we, I'm sorry, I cut away from this, but, you know, if you look at how this has gone together, uh, you know, what we've got is we've got two layers of this sort of bass synth doing its rounds, that one and another one somewhere, can't find it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, and then there's that little uh, razor one, which did went uh, or a razor one down here. And so you're adding little elements all the time. You're building up this stuff. So there's, it's sort of little ear candy things going on. And then you put the drum thing in and you put the little effects on that, you know, and sort of, yeah, it kind of, this is what the bottom of one of my sessions on uh, um, film or television stuff frequently looks like. Um, so you build up, because then on the top of all this, you then, you know, you can then whack in, if you were doing something which is a bit more traditional, which was going to want, uh, you know, a, a some kind of string ostinato on the top, it would all sound fine. Yeah, okay. Let's just see how it goes. Um, hang on. If this crashes now, I'll be, no, of course not. But, uh, uh, okay, hang on. I, I, you know what I should have done? Oh, no, look, too late, too late. Um, I will, I promise I will do, um, the BBC stuff next week. Uh, okay, so we just do the really, really predictable sound, which is, you know, sp Spitfire. Oh, hang on, it's gone into Tremolando. Oh, that's not the worst sound in the world, actually. No, go on, stick with... Oh, God, that's too loud, guy. Turn it down. Hello, Claudio. Why does he keep on doing that? Hang on. I must be hitting a button somewhere. It keeps changing. Yeah, but that's not quite. No, that's not particularly good, frankly, because. Uh, oh, I see what I'm doing. I'm keep. Ah, oh, hang on. I keep on get hitting the key switch. You get the gist, you know, so you can, you know, I preferred it without that, frankly. Anyway, but um, did you know you can disable those annoying pop up uh, in Spitfire? Ah, do you know you can once they're loaded? I know. I don't know if you can do it across all the library all the time ever. Do you have any thoughts on the Arturia V collection or Roland Cloud Vintage since Arturia V? I, I used. I just found it a little bit hard. I found them slightly hard work, to be honest, um, uh, because the um, um, the sync. When I first used them, they there was it was really hard to get them to um, to sync up to the clock. And I thought, really, you know. Uh, also, I think there's. And I, I really don't want to slag them up, but there's a slight style over substance thing going on a bit. Um, that they look lovely, but they don't, to me, sound as nice as some of these things. And um, so that's why I ended up largely moving. Uh, oh, that's a good idea. Yes, you could, couldn't you? Actually, what you do, yeah, Thomas is saying the right thing here. What you should do, and what I frequently do, is double up the tempo of the, of the uh, drums and uh, then... 
actually what I'd need to do with that if I did do that uh, so actually what do I want to do uh, the thing to do is to put it at 70.5 so then it'll think it's going double that then it goes twice, twice as fast and then you put uh, another kicker it's not that fa it's not fast enough it's not that even that drum and bass thing is it anyway look I'm I, I could uh, yeah, I uh, know. Actually, what I should do with that, you take it to a slightly different, uh, more of a break beaty type thing, and then get it so it gives you the drum and bass sort of like top line, and then put in sort of a kick and a snare so that you get the whole thing plugged along. Okay, so uh, not so straight, sort of um, aim and groove. Yeah, yeah, arm and groove going backwards. Uh, uh, Okay, the Roland stuff I haven't tried, and the Roland person got in touch actually, and I, I, sh I should really get back onto them, um, you know, and see how it goes. Anyway, look, I, it's uh, just coming up to the end of our session because I'm finishing at quarter to seven because it's a public holiday here in England, and uh, I had to promise my family that I would uh, finish at quarter to seven. <laughs> so that's why the, uh, you know, uh, Gin and tonic is called. No, a little glass of white wine in the sunshine is what's going to happen in five minutes' time. Anyway, but uh, look, um, which in your which packages are you in your session? Okay, we've what we've looked at today is um, uh, Dune three from Synapse Audio. We've looked at Repro one, Repro five, and Zebra from Uhe. Uh We've looked at Serum from XFER. Uh, and we've looked at Razor, which comes from Native Instruments. We've also looked at the uh, Isotope um, uh, Amazing uh, Musicians Bundle for $49. Um, and uh, where we've been using mostly Stutter Edit in this, uh, in this session. Uh, but I also use Iris a lot as well. Uh, and uh, so that's pretty much all we've got going. Uh, and it... You know, it's all kind of come together. It sounds all right. And um, we dragged a loop off uh, Splice, which is a, uh, one of those sort of uh, um, services where you can uh, source all kinds of uh, little audio clips, particularly good for drum loops and individual drum sounds and things like that. Uh, to, uh, oh, <laughs> um, Jacko, I'm very, very, uh, I'm very grateful. And I apologize for uh, the uh, nefarious uh, USB system sounds earlier, which uh, uh, probably didn't make your uh, day go any better. But look, um, just to remind you um, <clears throat> to subscribe if you're interested in this kind of thing and you haven't subscribed already. Um, you know, I'm not going to sort of creep into your inbox you know, and tell you horrible things. It's just going to be... get. Put the notification thing on because then when we do these sort of live things uh then we will there you'll get notified so subscribe if you haven't subscribed because next week we're talking to jake jackson from spitfire we'll be doing uh writing a piece of music with uh, uh spitfire discovery and we've got some weird and wacky thing with the music from animal uh, crossing so there's going to be lots and lots and lots coming up so look i hope you've enjoyed yourselves this evening uh thank you very much indeed for your company it's been really good fun um those of you who missed the beginning um we'll be uh, as soon as it's processed on youtube it'll be there to be uh, to be watched and published so uh, you can catch up and spin through and cut out all the boring bits <laughs> what boring bits when i pull on the baseball cap of good value and cast off the sunglasses of doubt thank you very much i've had a good time and i hope you have too we'll see you next week see you soon